Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video I've been waiting for a few weeks to make because this I can finally talk about. This is the Speedbee F405 Wing Flight Controller. Now I am a fan of Speedbee Flight Controllers. They're a sister company to Runcam and they make some really nice kit. They tend to put a bit of time and effort into it and they do think about it. It definitely doesn't feel like you get the version 1 of a product. You kind of get the version 1.1 or 1.2 by the time it comes out and that's a rare thing these days, particularly with some manufacturers in the hobby. But they contacted me a couple of weeks ago saying, do you want to take a look at one of our new flight controllers? It's the F405 wing. And I thought I misread that because obviously for those of you that watch the channel a lot, you'll know that I put flight controllers in an awful lot of my craft. And one of the big favorite wing boards that I use is the Matic F405 wing. So I kind of reread the email again. And yep, sure enough, Speedy B have just entered the board market, the flight controller market, aimed at those of us that like to fly fixed wing. Now, I was very interested to get my hands on this, to have a play with it and read the manual and have a look at it with the INF configurator and even on that Speedy B app or wireless to see what they've done that's different. The Matek F405 wing that we've all been using for a very long time is end of life. I personally love them. have a couple of spares still in the spares bin. But Speedy B tend to come up with extra little tweaks on the stuff that they produced. So I thought, okay, let me show you what I found that they've done that makes this different from the other F405 wing boards that you might have bumped into. So let me show you how it comes in the box. It actually comes as separate boards. The first is the F405 wing flight controller itself. So it has a barometer on there, has an OSD chip, has a micro SD card slot for the black box, has an unusual IMU, it's an ICM 42688P. It has six UARTs. Uh, UART 6 is dedicated for the wireless board telemetry. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, there's an I2C port on here that's gonna be used for external magnetometers or things like digital airspeed sensors. There are 12 PWM outputs. There's 11 of them standard and one LED pad if you wanted to use that as well. So that's gonna support lots of bigger models. And it's also designed so that you can plug in an ELRS or CRSF receiver using CRSF on UART 1. And the pins look like they're compatible directly with things like the Nano Crossfire. Firmware supported on it is the Speedbee F405 wing for iNav, which it comes flash with, version 6.0, which we'll look at in a moment. And also, very excited, the RD Pilot target is available, Speedbee F405 wing as well. So this will not only support our friends in iNav, but also RD Pilot 2. And that's something that I'm very excited about, because that's something that I've used the F405 wings from other manufacturers with both firmwares. Then we have the PDB board that goes underneath it. Now this is the one where you're gonna solder on your battery connections and your connections out to up to two motors. Input voltage range on this is two to six S. Battery voltage sensor is one to 10 K scale. And interestingly, they've put things like the multipliers in the manual for the RD Pilot and INAV2. Current sensing, 90 amps continuous, but up to bursts of 215 amps peak. Um, again, the scales are in the manual, fantastic. And it has a flight controller BEC output, 5.2 volts for the flight controller with a continuous two and a half amps and a three amp peak. That's gonna run the flight controller, the receiver, GPS module, SB module, telemetry module, and the WS2812 LED strip stuff too. There's also a VTX BEC output on here as a separate thing. That is configurable, normally nine volts with 1.8 amps available, at 2.3 amps peak. Although it's nine volts default, you can set it to 12 or five volts via a jumper for different styles of VTX, which is a lovely idea. And there's also a separate servo BEC output, which you'd expect on something like a wing board. And that outputs 4.9 volts, and that will support up to four and a half amps, five and a half amps peak. And it can run in either the default 4.9 volts, or it is configurable for six volts or 7.2 volts via a jumper on the back. On the top of the stack goes the optional Speedy B 
wing wireless board. Now this is quite cool. It gives you the options to connect via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and that's configurable by holding the boot button for six seconds. If you hold it for six seconds, it switches the mode. So you have this standard kind of BLE Bluetooth mode for your SpeedyB app. Then you have your Wi-Fi mode, which means you can connect it via some kind of ground station, which is going to be handy. So you Q ground control app, your Speedy B app, mission planner, those kind of things. And then you also have your classic Bluetooth SPP mode for connection to things like the apps on your phone or tablet too. In addition to that on the wireless board, there's also the LED strip controller, uh, the short press of the boot button to switch the effects, long press for two seconds to switch the modes. And this will support up to four WS2812 LED strip connectors with adjustable colors and flashing modes. And that will produce a 5.2 volts at 1.3 amps. And they have created their own LED strips to go with this as well. The other thing that's on the that board is an onboard battery level indicator. Interesting idea, there are four RGB indicator LEDs on the top that will display what's going on with your flight battery and how much there is left in the tank. Now there is a lot to like about this from the playing that I've done with it here on the bench. I am a fan of the price point. This is significantly cheaper than some of the other options. I like the fact that they've got different power levels for the video transmitters and the servos already all built in and just soldering across connectors that are going to change that for you. And I really like the way that they've tried it to make it easier for those pilots who don't like to solder on 60 pins onto a flight controller in order to connect things up. I sometimes do, but the fact that they've given you all the cables in the box, so you can either use all the connectors at the end, or you can use uh, the pads that's also available on the flight controller, mean that it's not only aimed at those of us who have spent the last 10 years soldering and own a really, really high-end soldering iron and some nice soldering kit. I like the fact because it's speedy, of course, they're going to add all that Wi-Fi goodness into it. And it's all nicely integrated into that top board. And I also like the fact that all those cables are in the box. Everything you need is already in there. And it means that modifying all the pieces is going to be reasonably easy if you kind of want to kind of crimp things together with the cables that are supplied rather than get the soldering iron out. And I was surprised that there was that much in the box because for this price point, I'd have thought they'd have scrimped on some things. But opening up the accessory part and seeing all those cables for all these ports was fantastic. I'm also a fan of the manual. The manual shows exactly where you're going to plug everything in and it's nice and colorful and it's easy to read. I like the fact there's a little printed version that comes in the box. Fantastic. I also like the fact that there's versions online as well, which you can just refer to. So rather than have to have your laptop or your computer by the side of everything when you plug it all together, having a physical copy I find actually really handy, just gives you a little bit more room on the desk. There's only a few things to be aware of with this from my playing with it so far. First of all is that the boards do all stick together with very small delicate risers, so make sure that you have the pins aligned properly before you put them in. There is a little protector on the pins for the PDB board to the flight controller, and there's actually two mini sets of pins from the flight controller up to the wireless board make sure they are aligned before you put it all together. You are going to have to have a pretty small jeweler's kind of Phillips screwdriver in order to put the screws into place. I do like the fact that everything is printed on it as well. So it's very easy and clear to see, even if you haven't got the manual handy, which pin is which and which port is which and which things you have to solder to get it to do which things. It would have been nice if there'd been kind of a port set up. Looking at iNav in this, as usual with these style boards, there are loads of UARTs for you to throw everything at. So as well as your GPS and your digital HD FPV system or your analog system, your receiver, there's also room for the airspeed sensors for LED boards. And it means that this is quite a customizable little bear, particularly if it's going to run iNav and also autopilot too. Be aware that that boot button is multifunction. They have made the several buttons that are on here do several things depending on how long you press them for. So keep that manual around. The default things where you know you'd briefly press it as you plug it in to put it into DFU mode work as expected. But some of the other stuff is kind of reliant on you pressing and holding buttons for a certain amount of time. 
Unfortunately, it's not soldering free. It, I think it would have been nice if they offered these with the pins pre-soldered. I know I get questions a lot from pilots about can I get one with the pins already soldered on because they're not experts at soldering. And I understand that. And I love the way that they've worked so hard to try and minimize the amount of soldering on this. However, you are still going to have to solder the pins on for your servo connections. And it would have been nice if they offered a version of this with that already done uh, for those pilots who are willing to spend an extra little bit of money in order to not have to fire up the soldering iron at all. For me, the cable from the flight controller out to the little USB board could be a couple of inches longer um, only because for the, some of the bigger builds that I'm doing where the flight control is hidden away at the back, having this port somewhere easy to access and plug in is very handy. And also sometimes I want the buzzer very far away from all the electronics. Uh, these kind of little piezoelectric buzzers that make an awful lot of noise also produce quite a lot of interference. So I like them nice and far away from things like the GPS and the receiver and other things too. It is obviously a little bit thicker than bores from other manufacturers like Maytek. So if you are a little bit tight for space vertically, you possibly could not just install the top board that will help you a little bit, but the size of the board is kind of pretty much set. So be aware of that. If you're a little bit tight for space, this one might not be for you. However, it does come with the right angled pins for the servos that will help keep the overall size down to as small as possible. I don't like the fact that the SD card is hidden away from the flight controller by the wireless board when you put it on top. I'd like to be able to access and remove that without having to remove that top board. It does also talk about VTOL on the web page for this thing. To do that, you're going to have to do a little bit of funky modification uh, with the power distribution board because at the moment it doesn't have enough outputs. I wonder if this means that this is going to end up being more of a modular system, and I'm really hopeful that it is. Maybe as well as this, you can maybe buy an optional PDB which has those extra connections on with a higher current rating, and you can just change the multiplier in RD Pilot or iNav for that stuff. That would mean that this then, rather than just being one flight controller, and this is what you get, because I've already built all the risers in and the modularity, maybe it means that there is going to be a PDB available for VTOLs and a PDB available for other things as well. Maybe the top board could do other things too and you could upgrade and change the stack to do exactly what you want. I really hope that's what SpeedyB are thinking because that would be quite a cute idea and something I haven't yet seen a flight controller manufacturer do. Last thing to be aware of again is this is an F405 board. I don't personally have an issue with that. I love F405 based flight controllers. They have an awful lot of UARTs and they are pretty bulletproof in my experience. So this is absolutely going to go in a wing or a plane in a build over the summer. However, having F7 versions available would be nice too, particularly in Ardu Pilot World where that extra horsepower can be used for other stuff. Some of the more advanced things, particularly at the moment in things like Ardu Pilot, especially with VTOLs, require the higher processing power in order for you to run things like the tuning for VTOLs. So hopefully that's an option too. And again, if that was available as a board that you could drop in and connect to the existing PDB that you'd already soldered into your system, that kind of modularity would just be fab. So in summary, initial impressions are extremely good on this. It looks like SpeedyB have actually thought about this and differentiated themselves from some of the F405 stuff that I've seen already. There's quite a few of the F405 wing style things. Maytek obviously blazed the trail but I've seen them inside things like the Atom RC Dolphin and also the Atom RC Swordfish, those ready-to-fly versions. So this is not a new idea, but I love the way that these guys have come at it. But because they've come at it having thought about it a little bit, if you're not a soldering fan, this is going to be right up your street. If you like the idea of all the wireless stuff, this is going to be right up your street. And I love the way that SpeedyB are trying to give us something different. So stay tuned. I'm sure this will be appearing in other videos. If you have any other questions, drop them down below. But I just wanted to show you this because I think for the price point, if it stays at that level, this is a little bit of a steal at the moment. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot.
If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.